Hello again, thanks for joining me this month. My title is Being Content Not Knowing. Now on the wall behind me, I'll just tip the camera so you can see, there's a cat. It's a photograph of a cat looking very happy and the text or the scripture below it is Godliness with contentedness is great gain. That's 1 Timothy 6 and verse 6. So being content, being godly and content is great gain. It's, it's a, something you should look for, something you should aim at to achieve. Not wealthy stuff, not stuff, but godliness with contentedness, great gain. So how do we get there? Well, we've got to learn to be content without knowing. It's a natural human desire to want to know how our problems are going to resolve. How are we going to get through this challenge or this problem? We hope for the best. But depending on whether we're optimistic or pessimistic by character, we may be discouraged and consider the worst case scenario. Think about what you're going through at the moment. Maybe a health issue or a difficult time at work or tight finances. It's important to assess at any moment of time whether we can carry on in the same way, continue to live the way we're living for the long term. In other words, is our pattern of life sustainable? Bottom line, we want to know the details, how things will affect us, especially in the future. This was the Jewish reaction to leaving Egypt, where they'd been slaves. They were leaving, led by Moses, Pharaoh was pursuing them, and the people said to Moses, Did we not tell you in Egypt, let us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? for it would have been better for us than dying in the wilderness. Exodus 14, 12, the Amplified Bible. Remember that key phrase, better for us. The frightened people did not know that God would drown the enemy in the Red Sea. Moses used his godly authority, stretched out his shepherd's rod to part the water. The people could not have foreseen that, so they were noisily complaining, considering only their immediate best interests. Now compare their behaviour with that of their forefather Abraham. God told Abraham, as he was known at the time, to leave his father's house. Genesis 12 verse 1, the Amplified Bible says this, for his own advantage to a land that I will show you. So at 75 years old, he set out taking Sarah, his wife, and his nephew Lot into Canaan. In Hebrews 11 and verse 8, we read, By faith, when Abraham was called, he went out, not knowing where he was to go. People could ask him, where are you going, Abraham? I don't know. God will show me. That's faith. In the following verse, we see that. By faith, he dwelt in a strange country. Hebrews 11 and verse 9. Now, this course of action that Abraham took was not at first sight in his own best interests. He didn't know where he was going, but he obeyed God. This was a characteristic strength of Abraham, who even changed his name to Abraham, which means father of many nations. And he changed his name under God's instructions, even before his son Isaac was born. That's Genesis 17 and verse 5. He trusted God implicitly, completely and without question. He didn't know where he was going to live, Neither did he know how in his old age he was going to become a father. He knew none of those details, but he did know one thing. God had spoken 
and he had his promise and his covenant that he would be multiplied exceedingly. Genesis 17 and verse 2, God had told him, I will multiply you exceedingly. So Abraham had active faith in his God who loved him and would provide for him. The Apostle Paul explained to the church at Galatia that God's promise was made to Abraham and his seed, that's a singular word, or his descendant, in other words, who is Christ, Galatians 3 and verse 16. Remember in a previous article, I explained to you how my granddad escaped being killed in the first great war of the world, you know, the World War I. We're remembering those wars at the moment as I record this in the, about 100 years ago. And my granddad escaped being killed. Now, if he had been killed, I would not be writing this. I would have, inverted commas, died in him, in my granddad. Now, by similar logic, Paul says that when we're born again, we are placed in Christ as I was then in my granddad. My mother wasn't born in 1916. So if he'd have been killed, I would not be here because I would have died in him. And Paul says, using that same logic, that when we were born again, we were placed in the body of Christ. Romans 6, verse 4 to 8. That means that our spiritual position, not our physical position, but our spiritual condition, is in Christ. And therefore, if that promise that was made to Abraham and his seed was made, it was made to him and his spiritual heirs. So we read in Galatians 3.29 that the promise of blessing to Abraham and his seed applies to us in just the same way as it applies to Jesus, because we're in him. Abraham's offspring and spiritual heirs according to the promise, that's what we are, his offspring and spiritual heirs. So that verse in Galatians 3.29 tells us that we're blessed and the promise of blessing is a covenant promise. Now with that promise of covenant, promise of blessing, we can be just like our spiritual father Abraham. We can walk by faith and not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, just like he did. We have a new nature and we can trust God's word as a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Psalm 119 verse 105. Just as God was to our grandfather Abraham. We can be content to trust our Heavenly Father just like Abraham and his word without knowing the details. Remember, Abraham didn't know the details. He didn't know where he was going to sleep, where he was going to live, what the country was like that he was going to. He didn't know the details. He didn't know how it was all going to work out. We have the promise that God has a plan. One of our favourite verses, Veronica and I love this verse, Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. He knows the plan. It's a good plan. Read that verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. You'll see it's a good plan. And we don't have to stay awake all night worrying because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. Jesus told us in Matthew 6, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Your Heavenly Father knows what you need. Okay, so that's the message this month. Be like that cat on the wall behind me. Be content, be godly and content. It's a great gain to be like that. God bless you, I'll see you next month.